Mara, Jillian, explain to us what you have over there. So, in washing machines, the clothes spin. What makes them spin? Well, if you open up a washing machine, you'll find this. The drum motor of a washing machine. I have demonstrated... So, he hello. Today, I'm going to demonstrate this washing machine motor. First of all, where did I get it from? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. From a washing machine. You may ask yourself, how do the clothes spin in the washing machine? This motor is responsible for the spinning of the clothes. When electricity is applied to the windings, the shaft spins and turns the drum of the washing machine. In this washing machine motor, as you can see, there are two windings. Field, these two, and the armature in the motor. It's on the shaft. When electrical energy is applied to the motors, mechanical energy is outputted. In this motor's case, at its rated voltage, which is 230 volts, it will, up, it will spin at 13,000 revolutions per minute on no load and can carry up to 12 kilograms. It is a universal motor, which means it can run on AC and DC. It is a series wound motor. Which can means you explain to the boys, Julian, what the difference between AC and DC is? Remember, we'll ex explain slowly and clearly so that they can understand. The difference is that in the DC or direct current, the, the flow of electricity is constant. It is not changing. Whilst in alternating current, the, the direction of current swaps, as is the graph of the AC, from the positive, a positive voltage and a negative voltage, a positive voltage and a negative voltage. Whilst in DC, the voltage is constant. It does not change. In the universal motor, this universal motor is series wound to be universal which means that the field and armature windings are connected in series with each other on the same loop of the circuits. I recall mentioning series and parallel circuits in my in my videos, as it is sometimes and series wound motors. Mala guys, Julian has a YouTube channel and he talks a lot about electricity in it and he has posted some videos on there on series circuits, parallel circuits, talking about motors and in fact we're gonna be talking a lot about series and parallel circuits julian why don't you explain quickly like you did with the um like you did with the dc and ac current what is the difference between a series and parallel circuit is guys this is very important we're going to be doing all of these in the lesson but some of you might already know them from before so let's pull out what we know first and julian happens to know these manager can you tell us what a series and a parallel circuit is the difference between them. A series circuit is a circuit in which the components of the circuit are connected on the same loop of the circuit. They are dependent of each other. The voltage across the components is not the same, which is why they are not effective in houses, because you get a voltage drop. In, But the current is the same. In parallel okay. circuits, however, the current is different depending on how much current the load draws, but the forces across the loads are the same. That is one advantage of parallel circuits and why they are used in houses. An advantage, a disadvantage of series circuits is that, as I've said, the components are dependent on each other. If the circuit would be interrupted at any point, electricity will stop flowing through all the components until the circuit is closed again. Unlike in parallel circuits, in parallel circuits, if the circuit is broken where on the branch where there's a component attached, only that specific component will stop operating until power is restored to the component because they are on separate loops of the circuit. Good job, Jerry. The generator is a self-excited generator, which means that the magnetic field is produced by the windings and not by permanent magnets. Look at the motor carefully. As you saw, it ran, it, it spun. Can you do it again for us, Julian, please? Okay, look at the motor attentively, please. When the generator gets self-excited at the higher RPM, it, the, the electricity should flow from the generator to the socket to the motor. If you want, maybe after the lesson, I can, I can Connect a bulb as well to that. Mela, let's see this one, Julian, for now. Look at the motor, please. Explain to us what you've done again over there. So did so, you see that, guys? 
Did you see? It was very clear in view. Tell us Julian, exactly what happened over there. So, that generator is a self. I have used that generator as a self-excited generator. There is this residual magnetism in the generator. When the armature turns at an RPM high enough, it, it, it induces a current in the armature, which then goes to the field and would generate an even larger magnetic field, which goes to the armature and generates a, a voltage usable for this DC motor. Michele, introduce to us a bit what you're going to do. So, so as you can see here, we have yeah, wait, uh, wait a second, Michele. Julian, can you mute yourself for a bit? Yes. So we, because of background noise, thank you. Tell us, Michele. So this is a this is a mechanical wooden clock that I built. So um, as you can see, there's an escapement here because without it, without it, um, it's not gonna really work. Because um, uh, to make it to make it work, as you can see, I connected uh, I connected the gears and and uh, also had to. It took me like three months to finish it. Or about four months. So also, as you can see, there's a spring here, which makes it to give it like, for example, energy for like a uh, creation nearly. Also, as you can see, um, some a lot of gears. Some uh, one of them were coming loose, and this and it was displaced by the shaft. But also, um, uh, a bit of a bit of some help I managed. So um, uh, as you can see. The escapement is connected to this to this gear as, you, as over here, and then this one uh, connects. It connects to this to this one. It nearly it's con so first this one connects to the escapement, and then the escapement um uh, it works by itself. So this is when the hands this this is when the hands turn. And how are they and turning? Are you turning them or so, is there a mechanism inside which turns them? Uh, I think there's a space shaft. Uh, usually, so there's actually, there actually it's a kind of a real shaft, it's metal and uh, not wood because it won't proof properly. So um, uh, also, it, uh, you have to be so careful not to break, break it because it's wood, not metal. Because usual, usual movements of clocks that are mechanical, they're made of steel, not wood.